Okay, we're back here at EMC World for Silicon Anglin, Wikibon's exclusive coverage of EMC World. We'd like to extract the signal from the noise, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, over 60 interviews in the next, over the three days. It's our day three, and we're going to try to keep the energy up. We'd love to get the entrepreneurs, the practitioners, the channel partners, the solution architects, the customers, but also we'd love to get the EMC executives, pres presidents, and, and all the top guys to hear what they have to say, and this is what we do at theCUBE, and extract that signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Inc. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. Brian Gallagher is here. He's the president of EMC's enterprise storage division, the high end, the mission critical, com customers running the world's most sensitive and important information. Uh, Brian, you guys are under fire, the walls are caving in, the sky is falling, block-based flash storage is going to take over the world. <laughs> How the hell did you grow 10% last quarter right, that's with all that question, bad news? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, great question. We've had a big strategy around growth uh, in the enterprise storage division. Obviously, we're, we've been in a well-established market for years. Well-established markets like the high end and the enterprise storage, you know, IDC and others, projected to be slower growth, you know, low single digits, but Clearly, we've been out, outperforming the market, and if you look at the business overall, it's on an uptick. We've had net new customer acquisitions, and that was uh, really about a strategy around expanding our TAM, you know, total addressable market. How do we do that? How do we get new customers into the portfolio? How do we reach different parts of the globe uh, with a value proposition that matters in the, in the data center or the service provider? So, you know, things that have helped, uh, the entry of the 10K last year. Um, so that increased the, uh, the customer base. We expanded that with the 40K as well. It's been a, you know, the top of the line in terms of data consolidation. Then you look at the other uh, parts of the portfolio around VPlex, compelling technology, differentiated game changer, door opener. And uh, it's just been tremendous. It's really making people rethink their data center strategy. And then RecoverPoint, having that ability to replicate between our platforms, uh, it's also helped to grow the portfolio and, and Brian, acquire new customers. Brian, I got I to ask you, because obviously everyone talks about oh, EMC, the big, big honk and drive that's going down, scale out open source commodity gear, is going to be cannibalizing into the business. The messaging here is more choice, more open. Um, and, and so that's kind of what, what people are, are, are kind of trying to say and kind of build that narrative. So I want to ask you, the transformation message is about the customers, right? right? And, and what you guys are doing with the customers. You guys are on a start of a huge install base, but talk about as, how do you expand your TAM when you have this transformation? And, and obviously the growth of storage isn't going away. So is it one of those phenomena where the growth is so massive where there really might be some canonicalizations <coughs> flowing into other groups of EMC, but you're still growing. How does right. that, how do, you, how do you do that? What is the strategy and, and why the growth? Right, and one trend that has been consistent is data growth, right? <laughs> that has not slowed down. It's just one of these, you know, Moore's law of information. And you look at the data growth rate, 60%, and we see that in all of our businesses. Things that are driving that data growth have traditionally been, you know, the enterprise data sources, but then more recently over the past, you know, four or five years, richer content, that occurred, you know, five, six years ago. And then with telemetry data, Joe talked about that yesterday in his, his talk, you know, that's really driving the, the, the growth of information. We see that across those businesses. And so when we look at, you know, kind of the disruption that's occurring, um, it's occurring in all the markets, right? To the traditional markets, it's occurring with new business models. And what we try to do in the enterprise storage division is make sure that we are ahead of these trends, make sure that we're disrupting ourselves, you know, as we see these trends occur, and make sure that we're helping to lead some of these changes. In fact, um, we started working on Flash in 2006. Uh, in the enterprise division, it was a project that we we're doing with the uh, Department of Defense. And we looked at the technology and said, you know what, this is relevant to all the data centers across the globe, not just for this project, but across the globe. 
How can we use it? How can it be disrupted? So, so, so are you saying, is it, is it the case where you have all these new variety of use cases? So the use cases, so it's not so much cannibalization, it's net new use cases. Yeah, is we, that what you're see, saying? Yeah, we see obviously the, the components to growth are the underlying data growth that we see, as well as uh, where we're expanding our TAM. Um, the other addition to the family was Cloud Edition, right, VMAX Cloud Edition. Uh, relevant to the service providers, but also opening up some new doors, you know, in there. Um, in terms of application growth, we do see net new applications in the enterprise. Uh, we've done a lot of studies around this in traditional enterprise. We expect applications to grow by 70% between now and 2016. Um, and, you know, the bigger opportunity is in net new big data applications. Uh, that will grow by, we estimate, uh, along with us or others, about 700% between now and two, 2016. So, so we got product, so talk about TAM expansion. Yep. Product, sure. you got function, yep. duplex, recover point, you got geographies, <laughs> yep. um, and, and you mentioned cloud, and do you see that, let me ask you a question about cloud, is that net new, in your opinion, or is that cannibalizing uh, existing IT customer spend? I would say it this way, there is a TAM shift that's occurring from the uh, data center to the service provider. Mm -hmm. It's occurring obviously in mid-tier environments, small to medium business today. Yep. We, we know that, we do see that, and uh, there are projections around that TAM shift, but um, in terms of the service provider growth, that growth, if you just take out the TAM shift, that's expected to grow higher at a higher rate uh, in high QoS environments than the traditional data center growth rate. So, you know, still single digit, but still significant, you know, in terms of the growth. Um, so we will see, you know, enhanced growth. And we've been all about share. You know, how do we get share? How do we innovate? How do we differentiate? How we can create that value proposition? And if you look at our share gains, uh, they've been outstanding in the, in the enterprise. Yeah, and if you can figure out how to sell to those cloud service providers efficiently right. and use them as a channel, you, know, you get more, more operating leverage, more, right, presumably. More opportunity. I want to ask you about, help us unpack the whole software-defined storage piece of it, which mm -hmm. is this horizontal play. Right. And you guys, you know, we talk east-west, you guys are a north-south play. You, were sure. saying you like to go north-south. Uh, you got OpenStack, open source, all this function, you know, trying to be developed by the, by the community, and here you are with the industry's highest end, most functional storage stack. Mm -hmm. How do you play into the software-defined storage world? And then let's, let's, let's drill down into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, there, there's two high-level threads, right? There, you know, the, the highest level thread about software-defined storage is abstract, pull, and automate, right? Abstract the intelligence you know, from the underlying infrastructure, aggregate in pools, so we're providing pooled services to the application, and then automate a lot of the challenges that you see in day-to-day -day data centers. There are challenges around deployment, provisioning, uh, data migration, tech refresh, data mobility backup, all that stuff that drives IT cost. It drives cost, it drives time, uh, complexity, challenges, um, you know, there's moving parts. When people are involved, things can break, um, more frequently than they can break when you're doing it through automation. So the top level uh, strategy is abstract, pull, and automate. The next part of the strategy is leverage, right? Because the storage industry is going to spend billions of dollars per year in innovation at the data layer. And our strategy is not to um, commoditize or uh, devalue that uh, innovation, because there's still a lot of innovation that's occurring in data storage. Data, in our own products, uh, across the board, primary, secondary uh, technologies, backup, archive, uh, flash, file, object, all the, all the components of it. So when we look at software-defined data center, our strategy is to abstract and leverage, right? Uh, uh, simplify it, but take advantage of differentiation. When we look at uh, Viper, right? Th think of it as uh, software-defined storage that enables us to do that. It's got southbound interfaces uh, to the uh, storage, whether it's EMC storage or non-EMC storage or commodity storage. And then it's got northbound APIs into frameworks that are either open frameworks like OpenStack. Uh, they could be you know, um, vendor frameworks uh, from Microsoft, vCloud Director, you know, being able to plug in to orchestration layers that add that higher level of differentiation 
and value proposition as well as automation of the server and application space. Okay, so you've got <clears throat> this horizontal platform. It seems like you're pointing to a new direction. I, I remember, Brian, I'm sure you do too well, the, the, John's been talking about this all week, the notion of multi-vendor. That right. was the open mm -hmm. back in the 80s and 90s. And EMC and, and storage actually created the multi-vendor mm -hmm. product. Remember the charts, you'd have a box and you'd have connecting to mainframe and Unix. Right. And, you know, all Windows the, the and various right, that, you guys sort of you know popularized that. It was that. table stakes back then. <laughs> yeah. It was table. Well, it, it's become table stakes, but back then it was it's quite new and innovative. Now, now you've got this new sort of openness. You know, you talk about open APIs and connections to frameworks, and you've also got a very rich north-south you know, to use the Vmax sort of example: uh, data management, storage management, and volume management stack. Mm -hmm. So, is that help us understand this? Is that redundant? Is there some redundant code within the horizontal piece that is volume management and you know, the control plane um, and, and storage management? How do those interact? You've obviously got greater capabilities in your stack than in OpenStack or in the Viper stack. Sure. So how do they interrelate and play together? Help us understand that. Yeah, great question. So, you know, clearly rich set of data services, copy services, you know, local remote replication. Uh, automation services, uh, volume management, all that stuff. Hardened, I mean, really hardened. Hardened, data center proven, tried and yeah, true. Right. And so we'll continue to in innovate. In fact, over the next several years, you'll see even greater capabilities that enable uh, you know, better operations in, in data management and also uh, data center management, if you will. Um, our strategy around that is when we look at environments, it's a matter of scale. Right, in, in some environments, especially like when we introduced the 10K, we were going into IT shops that had four people, right? <laughs> that did everything, network, ser yeah. server, application, storage, everything. So they go into four, you know, four shops. So in those environments, and uh, we talked about this yesterday, is that the element management of the systems is good enough. In fact, they don't necessarily have the ability to really orchestrate and manage a lot with small IT shops. When we look at some of the larger enterprises, it's more about heterogeneity, it's, there's a lot more complexity, there's a lot more scale. So in those environments, this is where Viper is essential. And the openness of that and the diversity of that is critical. We're enabling an ecosystem around it for our partners to help, uh, help us with this journey. Um, but what you'll see from the, the product is more integration this way that allows for seamless IT operations and workflow, and you'll have Viper above that that allows for the orchestration of the data framework, you know, both from a control plane and then ultimately from a data plane, being able to provide up object services, file and block services on top. How, how long, in your estimation, would it take an open source community to develop a reasonably comparable and competitive stack <clears throat> to what you have with VMAX? Yeah, so great question there. We've invested you know, tens of thousands of man years uh, into the stack. Um, so it's a daunting task, uh, but with open communities, you do leverage the scale in the industry. Yeah, so, go fast. No, it's, it's years, you know, it's, it's years. Uh, we're going to continue to invest heavily in all of our core uh, platforms. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a matter of, you know, the robustness. When we look at the future, you know, you will see our technology virtualized. You see that today with virtual recover point. People can load that on their own infrastructure. Rich talked today about a virtual VNX. All of our products will be virtualized and run on, on infrastructure that the customer procures. That uh, will be a model. However, EMC will continue to manufacture, sell, high rel, you know, many, you know, well manufactured it, products it, out of the And my last question is this vision that you guys are putting forth with Viper, this horizontal layer, essentially connecting through an API, uh, does it mean that going forward, I won't have to buy a new controller every time there's a new API that I could in theory connect through that horizontal exactly. layer and then get to your services, if those north-south services, if I need them, if, right. if I don't, and it's good enough, that's cool. Um, but that's a whole different model of mm -hmm. storage delivery. Right, um, and it right. does, you're absolutely right, that's the model that we're uh, pursuing, and it does simplify it, you know, it abstracts the complexity, um, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, our customers have 
a lot of other challenges than the fundamental tasks of pulling and automating and managing storage. Yeah, so that's big. I mean, you guys, Dave, Dave Golden says, we got 30% market share, we're not happy. That's you know, right. We got 70% to go. This is so. the face of, you know, <laughs> non-happiness. <Yeah. laughs> All right, Brian, really appreciate you coming on. One right. other thing, too. Um, Check out uh, Brian's keynote from yesterday. You really, it was a phenomenal uh, keynote that you did. Great little surprise that you did with the VPlex demo. Yep. Using humans, you know, as the example. Teleportation, <laughs> we've seen it all, Star Trek-like. Magic. <laughs> yeah, it was magic. It's so a random definitely check that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brian, thanks for coming right. inside theCUBE. We really appreciate it, you've been a great guest. We've, you've been on every Almost Memes, every year. Yeah, yeah, almost good friend every of the year. So, we really appreciate uh, thanks it. Thanks for coming on, I yep. appreciate it. All right, thank you. This is theCUBE, we right, talk to all the execs, okay. we talk to all the customers, we extract the signal from the noise, we're Stay getting here. the data, we're talking to everyone we possibly can, we go where the action is, this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, we'll keep on, we'll be right back after this short break.